So John, what happens to a vSAN cluster if uh, I lost power in my data center? So you've lost power in the data center, uh, generally caused by you know human error. I wasn't paying attention and plugged too many things in. Um, I thought that you know the 17 amp breaker was just a suggestion. Okay, so we've lost we lost power to the rack, or maybe someone rebooted the wrong hosts in the you know in the data center. Um, okay, the cluster is offline. Well, I've I power things back on. Power is restored. Um, will the host auto reboot? That's going to be determined on what you've set in the BIOS on that host. I encourage people generally to say on uncontrolled power loss, automatically restart things, but that's a personal choice. Um, do I lose data? What if there were writes in flight? What if I was in the middle of writes? This is often kind of a the follow-up question here. Um, and the answer is no, you, you do not lose data. Um, how vSAN operates is we do not um, acknowledge the write and consider it concluded until we have written, uh, for instance, with RAID 1, both copies of that data or with RAID 5, we've updated the entire stripe. Um, we wait on those acknowledgements. And in the case of uh, power loss, that data, you know, if we look at how SSDs work, uh, they have their own internal write buffers. But vSAN, if you look at the HCL, if you look at the vSAN compatibility li uh, list, the VCG, we only certify devices that have capacitors that basically make sure they can flush those, those internal uh, write buffers. So all writes are what we would call atomic, end-to-end. -end, they're guaranteed. I've had a vSAN lab uh, that was powered off all the time, sometimes as a demo, sometimes it's just, you know, we would forget that they were cutting power to the building that weekend. I never lost data. Um, the only case of concern for this is if someone didn't use supported devices, they use consumer class SSDs. Um, if you use the kind of stuff you'd use in a laptop, um, those, by the way, will not survive power loss. And that's because they're designed to draw on the laptop battery or they're not designed for RAID usage. They're designed for a journal desktop file system or okay with a little bit of file loss. Uh, but for enterprise use cases, vSAN only certifies enterprise class devices. Uh, we also do not use RAID controllers with volatile uh, write buffers. Some, some of you in the past may have had RAID controllers that had a battery that had to be swapped. And uh, that battery might only have three days or two days or four hours if you'd forgotten to change it of battery life before a little DRAM buffer would be lost and not committed. Uh, we, we, we don't um, want or need uh, write buffers on RAID controllers to be used. And, and for, for SAS and SATA drives that are still used, uh, we recommend just pass through HBAs. And for the handful of RAID controllers that were ever certified, we recommended bypassing and disabling that cache. Uh, note more modern ones would use capacitors. But that's the answer. I know there's sometimes some fear and uncertainty or doubt that, you know, I'm going to lose data because this is a distributed system. But I promise this is not one that plays fast and loose with what we uh, determine to be a committed right. No, that, this sounds like the biggest and best endorsement of the VCG I can think of uh, in, in terms of using the storage devices that we recommend. Correct.